They came on dreams, the immigrants, to build a nation. Being Icelandic is new to me. I can see loneliness, poverty, hopelessness. And that's how I'm here. I mean, that's our blood, that's where it all came from. Iceland, a northern island between Canada and Europe, inhabited by hardy people, fishermen, farmers, and poets, working together against the elements. In the last century, the hardship became unbearable. A massive volcano erupted. Disease followed. The effects were devastating to these people, my people. They needed a new home and set out into the world looking for a place where they could all settle together. News finally reached Iceland that Canada was willing to set aside a special area of land just for the Icelanders. Between 1870 and 1914, one-fifth of the population of Iceland ended up leaving. Among the hopeful were two young men, born the same year, not far from each other, whose fortunes would be dramatically different. Hans Peter Turgesson came from a family of merchants. He longed to carry on the family trade. Sigurstein Odson dreamed of owning his own land and marrying. He was my great-great-grandfather. Without land in Iceland, he wasn't allowed to take a wife. These two men would cross the sea as Icelanders, with their language, culture, and Lutheran faith, taking with them a love of Bibles and other books. A few years ago, I was reunited with my natural father. My family had broken up when I was three. I grew up not knowing a thing about my roots, till the night my father looked over his glasses and said, by the way, you're Icelandic. I was shocked, but curious, so I headed to Iceland to find out more. There's an emigration center in the north of Iceland to honor the exodus to Canada, to help people like me trace the past. I'll never forget laying eyes on my great-great-grandfather's face. This is the only picture of him. He looks so familiar. My cousin looks just like him. Hans Peter Turgesson and my great-great-grandfather, Sigurstein Odson, sailed towards their promised land, buoyed by hope and a new beginning in Canada. The voyage took four weeks. The North Atlantic heaved. Then, 12 days inland to Winnipeg. Sigurstein set off to claim his land with his new bride, Stefania. Both Hans Peter Turgesson and Sigurstein Odson had spent a few of their last dollars on marriage licenses. Finally, their new home, near Gimli, Manitoba. This whole area was a self-governing colony under an agreement with Ottawa. It lasted 12 years. The Governor General of Canada assigned them a piece of property where they could have their own colony, like where they had their own Icelandic customs, poetry and schools, and they had done their own thing there. There was nobody else here when I grew up. I didn't know a word of English when I started school. That's how strong it was. But it Hans Peter Turgesson's grandson, Terry, has the largest family archives in Gimli. I know Sigurstein's big dream was to own his own land. My grandfather's was to own his own store. He decided to build a store in Gimli. He had earlier bought property 
and that store was built in 1898, and he opened for business January the 1st, 1899. So this year is his 100th, 100th year. And when he went to Winnipeg to buy, uh, which they went only twice a year, I believe, to buy their supplies, you know, for everything, he always said, uh, a business before pleasure. I couldn't wait to see my great-great-grandfather Sigerstein's homestead. This is where Gudrun was born, the family's first Canadian baby. A new country, a new family, and land that was so different. He'd rarely seen trees in Iceland. Sigerstein's work was cut out for him. He was supposed to clear off 10 acres in the first year out there. And I guess all he had was a little old axe and a, and a pick to pick the roots up with. And you can, and the trees were maybe 10 or 12 inches in diameter. To cut that down with a, with a little old axe would really be an experience for people now who can't do that without a chainsaw. In the second year, he was supposed to do another 15 acres. And in the third year, another 15 acres. So in three years, he had to clear bush off 40 acres of land. Another immigrant family had already tried to clear this land and failed. But hard work had never scared off Sigerstein. At least it was his own land, in his own familiar community. The town of Gimli in New Iceland was beginning to thrive, and Hans Peter's store became the hub of the community. They would come in every Saturday. That was the date that the farmers would come into town and do their shopping. And there's an old saying in Iceland, what's the news? And they'd exchange their news of whatever happened or anything. Business was booming for Hans Peter and Gimli, but out in the bush, life was getting harder. Sigurstein was probably the talk of the town the day his land flooded. Terry told me how easy it was to choose land on a floodplain. When they get here, they had to go to Winnipeg, go through these maps that show blocks of land, and select by a number what one they want, without ever having seen the land. Then they would get out there and find out what the land is. When they get there, they find out that there wasn't very much that was actually arable. The farmers a lot of them got discouraged with trying to cut to clear the land and drain the swamps and this and that. Some of the Icelanders were giving up, moving out. But my great-great-grandfather Sigurstein was not quitting. Instead, he began to search for better land in the area. He found a quarter section a few miles away and applied for it. Sigurstein had taken root in this land it would be years before the land would offer up its reward. By the late 1800s, thousands of Icelanders had settled around Gimli, Manitoba, grateful to have escaped the barrenness of Iceland. So much had to be learned, ice fishing, hunting. Hans Peter Turgesson's family was growing. So was his store, and he was loved by the old and young. Us boys who would go to old HP and said, uh, can you lend me two dollars till we get paid? Yes, yeah, sure, my boy. There was about five or six of us, and he never refused us. And we were only about 12 or 13 years old, and we, of course we paid him back right away. Among other things, he served as the mayor of the town, always immaculately dressed. My great-great-grandfather Sigerstein was yanking up trees in his overalls, determined to live out his dream, too. His only hope was a new section of land. In 1887, the Icelanders gave up their self-governing rights and adopted the municipal laws of Manitoba. They cherished their cultural identity in their churches, schools, and newspapers. The first one published just three years after they arrived. 
Aren't they the world's greatest readers? I think the Icelanders, they always had two main papers, Heimskringla and Lögberg here. And they used to argue in the paper something. It, it, it was, uh, Dad used to read this to us out in the lake in the fish camps, and I'm telling you, it was the best entertainment I ever remember in my life. They used to have plays, H.P. Turgesson being the main character, and uh, he was quite the actor, the old fellow. And he loved to sing. Hans-Peter Turgesson even turned the second floor of his store into a theater. Culture bound the Icelanders, as did their faith. Bible scriptures were read daily in their homes, schools, and in their church. My great-great-grandfather was a typical Icelander. Reading was a big part of his life. Poetry, literature, and his Icelandic Bible. But English was difficult for Sigurstein, especially the rejection letters from the land office for the new land he had applied for. During the uh, signing of the papers and stuff like that, they couldn't get straight this Sigurd's name, so they changed his name to Samuel, which caused him an awful lot of trouble in his later years. And they see there's a Sigurd's name on here and a Samuel on there, and they thought there was two different people for a long period of time. You read the legalese in these letters. If you've only been speaking Icelandic and you're having to read these English documents, very confusing. Unbelievably confusing. My great-great-grandfather was fighting the trees, the swamps, and now the bureaucracy. Nothing was getting planted. The family was going broke. When their fourth daughter, Wilhelmina, was born, they had to give her away to her aunt and uncle. She was always resentful. She wasn't brought home. I always thought she got the best of the deal. Mm. <laughs> she had very loving parents and her aunt and uncle. It's a father's shame not to be able to provide for his child, a wound that never heals. Sigurdstein's bright dream of freedom and owning his own land had darkened. It was now a fight for survival. Alcohol became his escape. He wasn't alone. A temperance movement was begun to control the access to alcohol in the area. There was more of it than there had been in Iceland. Hans-Peter Turgesson was involved in that movement. He was worried about his fellow Icelanders. Behind the booze was hurt and rage. All Sigurstein ever wanted to do was farm. But he was losing control, and neighbors complained. Back then, there was just one dumping ground for everyone who wasn't fitting in. The insane asylum. His wife Stephania begged the land office to hold the land he had been so desperately requesting that he was away temporarily and begged the institution to let her husband out. After five years of being in and out of the institution, my great-great-grandfather Sigurstein Odson finally managed to get home. The land he had longed for was finally his. Sigurstein's children had grown in his absence. Gudrun married and moved in just down the road. Sigurstein was a good grandfather, and his oldest grandson wrote a loving poem about him. I remember happy visits to Grandpa's home just down the road in sight. My grandpa would take my eight-year-old hand in his, 50 and seven. I felt so proud to be his eldest grandson. I was sure this was heaven. But the tender years wouldn't last. Sigurdstein's daughter, Gudrun, grew poor and alone, her husband away working the railway. Poor Runa. She had a tough time with eight children to look after and a dilapidated old house. 
she had it so tough that eventually she just couldn't hack it anymore and she lost it altogether. Gudrun tried to end her life in a swamp that had almost claimed her father. Sigerstein must have wondered how much more the land would cost. Hans Peter Turgesson came from Iceland and opened the busiest store in Gimli. My great-great-grandfather Sigurstein Odson chose a different life, breaking 60 acres of land with his bare hands. The crops that grow today bear witness to his effort. But Sigurstein Odson became very sick, worn down. Chummy's family rallied around him. I was only eight at the time, and it was quite a trauma to see him being carried in there on a stretcher. I was not too happy. I had to give up my bed for him. Apparently nobody, uh, they couldn't find a place for him. There were no hospitals at that time, so my mother volunteered to look after him. There was relief in Sigurstein's suffering. His long-lost daughter, Wilhelmina, the one he had to give up, returned to nurse him. My mother did go back, and she helped take care of him during those uh, last few days. And that, like I say, is probably why mother had the family Bible. This is all that remains of one man's efforts, the family Bible, precious as gold, and the land he cleared. No more his kindly eyes and magic voice and kindness know. He too had missed so much our dear grandma who had gone two years before. Some said just to prepare their heavenly home and to greet him at its door. I wish there was more to hold on to something to say Sigurstein Odson was here. Even his grave is unmarked. Two years after his death, Sigurstein's daughter Gudrun was permanently institutionalized. She died there 18 years later. Gudrun's eight children were given up and scattered out of their promised land, fostered and orphaned across Canada. Hans Peter's grandson Terry and his wife Lorna are the link to my past the keepers of Icelandic heritage. These are the eight children that got scattered across Canada mm -hmm. once the breakup. Mm -hmm. And this is her grandfather, Clifford. And mm -hmm. you never knew him? No. No. So did, she didn't even know she had Icelandic roots. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Many Icelandic families, like the Turgesons, continue to carry on the hopes of their forefathers in maintaining their culture, and they celebrate their roots at the annual Icelandic festival. This year will be their 110th. The Turgesson store is especially busy during the festival and is run by Hans Peter Turgesson's bloodline. He was in the store himself for some 40 years. My father was in the store for over 60 years. I bought the business from him. So I'm the third generation at this point. And now my son, Stefan, is the fourth generation in the store. I think the grandparents would probably be very delighted to know what's going on in this day and age. Because it's, it's continued, it's very strong. Thank you, dear, now you gotta kiss me. Thank you so much, you look beautiful too. The Fjallkona is the symbol of Mother Iceland, an honor bestowed on a Canadian Icelander every year. The president of Iceland has recognized Lorna's efforts to preserve her culture. This, this is my mother. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mom, you guys you found it. Did you have a Memory is everything. And as I claim my place in this festival, I'm united with family members I've never met. We join to remember Sigurstein and celebrate the sacrifices and efforts he made so we could call Canada home. Finally, the past and present are joined in a single bloodline. He would be proud. For in the Icelandic tradition, nothing and no one 
is forgotten. Nia, Oli, this is Frida, this is my mother, Ruby, and this is David. That's great. I wouldn't have missed this right now. Me too. Some people have said that I look like Sigerson, and uh, I see the similarities, no doubt about it. He's as handsome as I am. <laughs> We've been enjoying Isla Dinga Dagren. I can say it now. I can say it. Watch more. <laughs> I just wish that my mother was here to see this. And we're just all very happy that it's happened. Being here really brings back to me her family and what she lost. And what we've, you know, kind of lost. It's nice to regain that. For a 20-year-old man to leave his homeland and come here by himself, it's, you know, quite a quite something pretty pretty harsh <laughs> I just can't imagine it I think I would want to die yeah. drinking probably was his escape our father who art in heaven we gratefully give thanks and from Sigurdstein's own Bible words that have comforted me on my long journey home I will rescue and gather those who have been scattered.